Hello. What's going on, Brother Dave Lawrence over in uh in Honolulu where you're headed in not that long of a time? <laughs> I'm good, Dave. How are you? I'm good, brother. Thank you very much for asking. And I was just wondering before I start uh, getting into your time, and I really do appreciate you taking a few minutes for me. Can you hear me okay? Do I need to turn it up, down, anything? No, I can hear you fine. Can you hear me okay? You're sounding very good, too. Okay. And um, so, again, thank you for, for, uh, for being willing to do this. We do appreciate it. And uh, I was very lucky, uh, Richard. We have uh, Steve, the loyal listener, and he has been uh, always supporting me with tidbits about people's history in the islands. And, man, I was lucky when he found out you were coming. He threw, <laughs> he threw together this little list, and uh, often these uh, jog memories, and if it doesn't, no worries whatsoever. But according to him, it said it was March 22nd, exactly 18 years ago, 1997, that you made your Hawaii debut. And so you've been coming here quite some time now. That was the Hawaiian hut, according to him. Does that sound right in your, in your record books? Uh, I think it was, it was yeah. It was, uh, it was tastefully decorated, uh, as far as I remember. <laughs> 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 Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's an interesting place. That's cool, and, and yeah. you have some memory of that. And uh, it just said you performed over on Maui too at that time. We're statewide, so we're talking to you. Have a you know your community is around the islands here that's tuned in. Doris Duke Theater. You came back in two thousand two. Yep. Yep. Remember that one? Yep. And then we flash forward to about eleven years ago, two thousand four, and another two night stand, same venue. Um, and a fascinating piece of music that hopefully you'll share a little bit with us, which is really says a lot about the kind of guy that you are when it comes to uh, history, I guess <laughs> it might be. And, and then you also did the uh, Polyku Theater, Windward Community College. <clears throat> Um, um, yep, yeah, that, that, all, that all sounds true. Uh, I, I cannot deny any of it. <laughs> Steve's good at tracking people down. Uh, Crikey, wow. Yeah, he is. Dead. He's good like that. Any other ones that we left out? Anything come to mind? Any personal visits here that... Uh, well, probably. I, I mean, I've I visited the islands uh, more than I've played the islands. Mm. So um, I, I've hung out on the, on the north shore of, uh, of Oahu uh, um, several times, several times, and um, that, that's a beautiful spot, lovely place to be. Dig that. I mean, coming from LA too, right? That's where you're based, so it's a real yeah, yeah. It's real easy. It's kind of like a suburban thing for you guys. Not much longer <laughs> than a, not, not much longer than a long car ride over to Malibu or something. Well, slightly more than that. Slightly <laughs> more than that. <laughs> um, you, the OBE. I've been there. Have been some cats on the show over the years. I've been. They've had some great stories. Cliff Richard. His story was one of the uh, more riveting, with no doubt. I kind, <laughs> kind of raises the pulse a little bit. Maybe he's also a good storyteller too. Maybe a combination of the event and then the story. Can you share your experience with us? OBE. Yeah. Um, for the uninitiated, uh, <laughs> for those of you who don't have a queen, uh, uh, um, this is an honor. It's, 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 it's like an honor. It used to be a kind of political thing. Uh, you know, if you, you do favors for, for the king or the queen and, and, and they give you, you know, a, a kind of a medal. And now it's much more uh, community based. So, so y your community nominates you um, uh, for these, these awards. And. Um, you know, there's various levels. You know, the, the, the higher levels are things like Sir. You know, you get, you get to be, for instance, Sir Cliff Richard. You know, so that's a higher one. Uh, but I got an OBE, which is, which is very nice. You know, that's that's a it's a nice thing to have on the wall. You know. Is there no and official title that we have to call you something? No, you just call me. Well, call me. <laughs> call me whatever you want to. Well, we'll call you <laughs> with your North Shore connections. We'll call you Brother Richard. Oh, Brother Richard, I like that. That's <laughs> very very cute. But um, yeah, yeah, you get to spend you know your 15 seconds with a queen who's. who's is lovely, charming, you know, beautiful. She's sort of sparkling and witty and, and, and very sweet. And um, somehow she manages to, to deal with hundreds of people a day, you know, and, and still keep smiling. She, she's an amazing diplomat. Uh, but but that, that's good fun, you know. It's, um, you don't get any real, do you, do you guys talk about anything of substance, or is it really just like, hello, thank you sort of deal? Well, well, well it's hello, thank you. I mean, t she asked everybody uh, uh, what they do, you know, and I said, well, well I'm a, you know, I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm a singer and a, a guitar player. And she says, oh, you do, you do both. How wonderful. And I said, I, I said, well, I hope it's wonderful for the audience. <laughs> I like that. She said, ha, ha, ha. And then, you know, that, that's my time up right there. I like that. Oh, you do both. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not at the same time, do you? At the same time, surely. <laughs> And where is that Buckingham Palace? Uh, that, that's the Buckingham Palace, yeah. Wow! And is that your only time in that heavy-duty establishment, or what's the? Uh... Well, it's my second time actually. I, I went to a kind of music industry uh, evening there um, uh, a few years ago, which was great fun because it was like you know Cilla Black and Shirley Bassey and all, all these all these people were there. I just had a fantastic time. 
Wow, that's a uh, now yeah. Now that's the other major leaders. Private. I mean, now you met the big one. So ser- I'm not trying to even compare anybody else, but other folks besides the Queen, Her Majesty, that you've had the uh, the opportunity to bump into over your years there might be who. Uh, major leader. Like, you mean like of countries? Oh like no, of your from just... from your lovely country there. Like uh, from my lovely country. Um. Please. Not that many people. I, I mean, I I try not to move in those circles. If no, you know Tony I mean. Blair? no Tony Blair. No Tony Blair. No, I never met Tony Blair. Uh, I, 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 apparently, Cameron's a fan. He, he has my records, so um, I'm looking forward to meeting him. Although we may not agree on politics. Not the Iron Lady. No, not the Iron Lady. No, thank you. <laughs> you know, it's weird, dude. I was one time doing an interview with Tony Iommi from Sabbath, and I'm on. <laughs> I'm at WNYC Public Radio, New York. Yeah, sure, I know. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm sitting there with him in a studio. We're yakking, and he's telling me about the Royal Jubilee or something, and he's telling me about Tony Blair, who he couldn't get off his arm all night, just wants to talk Sabbath with him all night long. So that's why I guess I just wonder. It's so weird, you know, you hear a story like that, you almost have to think, is he really saying this? <laughs> you know? It is strange. Yeah, yeah, but no, he was a guitar player. Uh, a, a friend of mine uh, b- b- built a guitar for, for, for Tony Blair. So, uh, oh, that's the connection. I know it's true, yeah. I oh, I true. get it. Okay, so no wonder. So he mm-hmm. really, uh, well, well, he's a little heavier, though. He's on the, uh, the heavy yeah, side. Yeah. <laughs> Well, he's now he's now an ex prime minister. So, it, well, yeah, he's sort of like he's trying to be a diplomat, I guess. Yeah, uh-huh. He's trying to be, but uh, does he have the OBE or no? Tony Blair, um, he's probably got something. He's not a sir yet. At some point, they'll make him a sir. Does that mean you're going to someday um, ascend? I guess that's the right word to serdom. Serdom. Uh, you know, I think it's unlikely. I think it's unlikely. This is as high as you'll go in that? In that. Yeah, I, I think so. Well, I look at some of the things that you're up to, though, and it's kind of touching because uh, on a much more serious note, when I look at your, you said it, you get they get these things to people these days because they're doing good things, too, for folks. Uh, kind of like Cliff, he may be a superstar, but there's other things about him people don't know that are pretty good about mm-hmm. some of the ways that he helps out i was at your site recently and it was something very touching there and it's a kind of different thing but it relates to why you would be honored uh zoe climley uh, oh, oh yes zoe climley well, well you know um th- th- you know I- i'm not really driving that in a sense it, it just kind of happened because um well i, I- i'll backtrack I-, I run a guitar camp in uh just outside of Woodstock, New York, up, upstate New York, and uh, we've been running for about five years now. Uh, one wonderful camp, about 110, 120 people. Great, um, great location, love it up there. It's great, great location. Yeah, you know, we we have great teachers. You know, you know we 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 have like Sean Colvin and uh, my son Teddy, uh, wow. Martin Simpson teaching guitar. I mean, it's just absolutely brilliant. And uh, Zoe Klimley was a young student uh, who, who who died um, um, uh, a couple of years ago, and. Uh, the people at the camp uh, wanted to start a scholarship in her name, uh, and, and, and her parents as well. Um, they wanted to start a scholarship in, in Zoe's name. So um, we thought that was a great idea, and, and, and um, it's enabled us to have, you know, I think last year we had like six uh, scholarship kids at the camp, which is fantastic. Who do you the, choose to give the scholarships to? Um, you know, it, it, it's applicants basically under 24, I think, 24 years old. So it, it's, it's to get kids who might not be able to afford <clears throat> to go. Uh, in some cases, we give part scholarships. Um, but, but I think this year, you know, the, the, the fund is so successful that uh, we might be able to offer anything like, something like 10 places at the camp, which is uh, just fantastic. And what a fantastic way to honor somebody who was a young, aspiring musician who... Yeah, yeah she was just a, a lovely person, there, and it was a great, great tragedy to lose her. What was the, uh, God bless her, what was the, the thing that helped inspire you to do this frets and refrains? That's what you call it, right? Frets and refrains? Frets and refrains, yeah. Um, well, you know, they, they asked me if, I, if I'd like to run a camp. Uh, at this particular um, location, they run, you know, maybe eight or nine camps. You know, there's a Steve Earle camp, there's a, there's a King Crimson camp. Oh, wow. Uh, there's, <laughs> there's a, Is this the rock and roll fantasy camp, people? Um, no, I don't, no, 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 it's a different one. This is called uh, Full Moon Resort. Um, okay, but it's similar, it sounds like it, from the way you're I talking. mean, it's similar. Um, th- th- this one's a little more low-key, you know, it, it isn't quite so head-banging, you know, in, okay. its, uh, in, it, in its pretensions and uh, aspirations. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but it's a beautiful spot. So, that, you know, they, they just asked me if I'd like to do a, a camp, and, and, and uh, you know, I thought it'd be fun. 
and uh, we did it the first year and we found that we, we just loved doing it and uh, I think we got very lucky with, with the location and the uh, and the teachers and uh, we've been rolling ever since and it's just super fun and it, and it, and it sells out I know somebody who, I know somebody who likes doing that racket maybe you can get him to come do your thing and he's a guy like you I don't know if he's an OBE although you would think with his heavy duty name he'd at least have something like that, and that's Roger Daltrey, right? Because I know he does that racket. He's done oh, he that, does? the racket. Yeah. See, I'm giving you a great. Now you bring him; he'll sit around, and uh, <laughs> he can man. Just I know he may not be the you know the massive guitar player you are with all your dynamics, but he's fun to just sit around and goof around with. I sat in his dressing room one time before a Who show. He's a, he can yeah. be very humbling and entertaining. He put on a good thing, and he's into the Cancer Trust. What's a, that's another. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's true. Well, well, well we, we, we'd have him teaching, like, screaming or something, you know. Like, we, that, you see, you could do a few, yeah, and he's yeah. a survivor, too. That thing still sounds, uh, although yeah, when he hits... Yeah, I mean, one, one of the hardest things in the music business, you know, so, so he, he could teach a survival class. <laughs> <laughs> In this this day and age, you kind of need something like that. That's one of the yeah. things that uh, you're a real endurer, and some of that really is to kind of um, find ways to reinvent yourself, but yet stay true to what makes you passionate. You did this thing that um, it shows a lot of respect. I mentioned it introducing you. You sort of the 1,000 years of popular music. It's a um, oh yeah. It's a, how does a guy? Because um, not I mean a lot of people do retrospectivey things, and it's cool because you learn from it. When cats like you do that, you know it's helpful. Yeah. It's like you teach. So thank you for being a teacher to younger dudes who don't know as much or know nothing like compared to you. But what made you say to yourself like this would be a cool a cool bit to do? A cool project. Um, well, uh, the, the thousand years of popular music uh, thing started uh, with Playboy magazine, like, like so many good things, you know, that, that come from Playboy. Um, uh, and uh, they were approaching uh, various artists uh, t- to give um, uh, top ten lists. Uh, this, is, this is in 1999. This is for their Millennium issue. And they're asking people uh, for their top ten or top 20 uh, songs of the Millennium. Uh, and, and I thought, they, they don't mean Millennium. You know, they mean like ten years, you know, maybe 20 at the max, you know. <laughs> so, so I thought, well, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm going to do the millennium. I, I, I'm going to send in my list. I'm, I'm starting in a thousand AD. Uh, you know, so, so I started with, uh, you know, St. Godric, you know, an obvious choice for a thousand AD and um, worked my way slowly and inexorably through the centuries. Uh, I think I had like, like maybe two entries from the 20th century. Uh, and I, I sent in my list and, and you know, they didn't print my list. Can you believe that? I think that... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's a great thing though when I've stood in Westminster Abbey and seen when that place was the stones were laid it makes it just made me think wow you're tackling where do you where do you go to find the repertoire where how do you start looking and saying all right I'm going to go all the way back to 1000 AD oh okay well, well you know there, there are stuff in in manuscript form uh, that you can decipher um and you know there are specialists who who make CDs of, of uh, you know early music. Um, so you always... researched it and then picked out tunes that what appealed to you somehow. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, <clears throat> um, and the nice thing about doing that project is is that you find all, all these kind of hidden gems. Yeah, you, you know things get le- left behind by history all the time, mm. and uh, the, the, there are these you know great ideas and uh, and terrific songs just just lying there. You know, waiting. To be performed, so um, we, we just have a great time uh, doing the, doing the research for it. You know what I love is I'm just, and you could totally correct me if I'm wrong, and please do. But I'm like thinking I was reading a little bit about your background because uh, just about your family and maybe where some of the stuff comes from. It sounds like you got off on the search for the stuff. I think your pop, he was like a detective for Scotland Yard, but also a guitar player. And I think, <laughs> wow, there's kind of both. You know, the influence because you end up doing that, and then you kind of all these years later, you like to play Mr. Detective going through a thousand years of songwriting well i suppose so yeah um well, well um uh he, he was also uh you know a history fan um there you my go. father yes so uh, i i probably got some of that from him look at that he, history. He, he had a house full of uh history books so um i i love all that stuff and and, and he also had great uh uh you know Django reinhardt records and uh, les paul records so that, that, that was a good uh a good way to grow up. See, all the connection that that cat left you. God bless him. That's really hip between yeah, the... Because yeah. uh, I like that. It takes a lot of courage to want to pick out music, Richard. That's that. Uh, some people would say antiquated. I don't know. I just appreciate it. Maybe it's... Um, well, it's, it's, it's not you to say courage. I, you know, some would say stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> Lack of commercial sense. 
eh, isn't that what people kind of clamor to you for in some ways? Um, well, uh, yeah, um, all three of them. Yeah, yeah, no. Well, it's a it's a great concept. Um, as I as I go to wrap it up with you, um, there are ways, uh, other ways in in your life. Uh, we talked a little bit about the the your the thing, the scholarship fund uh, for Zoe, and mm-hmm. uh, briefly mentioned uh, Roger Daltrey and the Teenage Cancer Trust. Are there ways that you've been touched in life, forever changed by powerful events that the lasting impact has uh, done something to you or made you think different? That's worth sharing. Uh, I think all the time when you lose people, you, you know, um, uh, I, I had a girlfriend killed when, when I was 20 years old, and, and that, that was uh, uh, an arresting uh, moment. And um, uh, uh, as you get older, uh, you, you lose more and more friends and, and people, and uh, you appreciate life more. Uh, you, 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 you realize that every human being is precious. Every human being is unique and different. And... Uh, our time is short, and uh, the, 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 I think the, the great motivator, <clears throat> you know, for, for, for living is, you know, is love. So, um, you know, you learn to love people. You, you learn to love people in spite of, of their quirks, <laughs> and uh, and I think that that's the thing that, that makes the world revolve. Yeah, those are the kind of. Uh, after I lost my mom, I started to really notice a lot of stuff like that it takes like the hawk out of you and makes you a lot more willing to try to see some kind of compromise with people and uh i think so it makes you humble as well you know i think you have to get humbler as you get older because you realize that uh you don't know anything and uh and you're you i think you get smaller and smaller as well as you get older uh, you know you you start off having this kind of big ego and then that gets chipped away and chipped away by life throwing things at you and uh you you end up kind of small and humble but maybe that's a good thing i love the way you said that you don't know anything i used to sit and talk with my mom about uh our cat that had passed away and and i would think like you know i would say to her oh she's like a and it would upset me you know i would get upset because i loved her so much and i think oh she's like a flower and flower doesn't go somewhere my mom was so confident and so gentle and never pushy and she would say no she's still with us and she had this thing and it was really something and now because when you say that about you know you really don't know anything and now i realize that you know so often when i um i sit and i think i realize man i don't i don't know much and i i don't think what i thought um yeah and every yeah. day you learn a little bit more you you're right you you kind of open your mind to the things that you you create a lot of routines around you build up perceptions but then you can realize there's a lot more stuff that's just beyond what you are perceiving well, that's all true. Absolutely, I agree, one hundred percent. And uh, it's always a. Uh, I'm looking forward to your. Uh, you going to do any extra time when you're uh, with your North Shore connections? Are you going to be hanging out for any extra amount of time when you're in town? Um, I think we're going to hang on an extra week. Uh, but, uh, basically, our, our place in in LA is, is being uh, renovated, so um, there's not, nothing to come home to. <laughs> Big timing. Except, except a bomb site that is just going <laughs> to be like a shell. So uh, uh, we might as well stay away a bit longer. Yeah, well, if you're at all, I just open the invitation. We have this nice, nice studio, nice wood, big room. We can. It's kind of a good facility to do acoustic things. I do a bunch of interviews in there. Ziggy in there, Ben Vereen, different rock bands, Journey, Godsmack, Airborne Toxic event, all kinds of weird, you know, different yeah. things. If you if you felt like doing anything while you're in town. Love to have you come down and do something. I just want to... Well, thank you. So thanks for the invitation. But, if, if I'm passing, I shall drop in. Aloha, it's Richard Thompson. And you're listening to All Things Considered on member-supported Hawaii Public Radio with my friend, Dave Lawrence. Very good. Hope this wasn't a hassle, dude. You have fun and I keep you remotely interested. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, sure. No, no, that was fun. Thank you so much. You're welcome so much. You still tight with the, any of the Fairport guys? Who's your friend? Who's your tightest friend in that uh, configuration? Uh, Fairport, uh, probably Simon Nickel. Simon Nickel and who's a uh, is Doan Perry still work with those cats at all? I don't think so. I don't think so. And uh, Dave Pegg still do anything with them? He's still yep, he's, he's he's still there. Yep, he, he's a good friend too. I mean, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't see them that often, but but we're, we're basically still friends. Yeah. He's a very nice man. I met him several times over the years. He was always very kind and decent. And oh, good, good, good. I was just curious if you were still super tight with him because he just struck me as a decent cat. Yeah, well, I, I still.
still see them, and, and I, I, you know, I mean, you know, sometimes you leave bands for other reasons. It's not because you don't get on, you know. Uh, so we, we were always a friendly band. And also, what you said, as time progresses, you learn to forgive. You learn there's a little bit more important stuff. You know, your opinion about stuff changes, undoubtedly. Yeah, that's for sure. Absolutely. God bless you, brother. Be safe. I'll talk to you soon. And, and the invitation's open. You decide you want to do some publicity or any promo, you talk to Kevin. I'll have you down to the thing. Make it real nice for you. Okay. Well, that's, thank you, Dave. That's, that's great. You're welcome. See you, brother. Okay. Bye-bye.